Hi guys, Munoz here. Uh, so today's video is going to be a bit of a long one. Uh, to save yourself time, energy, and uh, stress, I'm going to leave timestamps so that you can jump to whichever particular topic or point in the video you want to go to. Um, I'm going to talk about the eight or the 10 payment platforms, online payment platforms that I use to earn money online, uh, transact cryptocurrency, selling and buying, uh, as well as saving in Forex, basically. You can use these across Africa, from Nigeria to Zambia, and countries in between. There might be some exceptions like Zimbabwe, Somalia, probably even Ethiopia, but generally most of the African countries you can use these. Maybe even Democratic Republic of Congo might not be allowed to use, but everywhere else you can use these. Uh, the only, the best way to check if you can use it is to try and open an account. I also talk about how you can do that. Uh, some of them do come with uh, debit cards. There's, um, I've got three Payoneer MasterCards and one Paysera Visa card. So you are able to access your funds uh, either via the ATM, uh, using them online for online shopping, or even transferring to banks around the world relatively cheap or for free. So let me just list them uh, for my favorite, my number one top to, yeah. number, to number eight. So my number one favorite online payment platform is Paysera. Paysera is a, is a virtual bank from Lithuania. It's really, really good, allows you to do so much transacting at practically for free or really, really low cost. Um, you can't go wrong with a Paysera account. Number two is Skrill. Skrill is a payment platform like uh, PayPal with a lot of added benefits and uh, advantages. Uh, it does have a lot of restrictions, but they are, they are really, really that simple. They're really, really simple. And it's way cheaper than PayPal to use. Number three is PayPal. I know uh, a lot of African people have uh, a love-hate relationship with PayPal. PayPal is really, really um, it, ha it has so many restrictions. They are easy to overcome. I'm going to show you how to do that when opening an account in all. And uh, what if, with PayPal, you are able to earn uh, from online work or business from clients all over the world. I'll show you how in this video. Number four is Payoneer. Payoneer is a virtual bank some, similar to Paysera. And this one is from America. It allows you to have multiple currency accounts where you can earn from uh, online business from around the world. It is a good platform, but it ha does have a number of restrictions, which I shall cover. Number five is Perfect Money. Perfect Money is similar to PayPal, allows you to do so much uh, online uh, payments and receipts. And uh, this one, you definitely need to have it if you are going to be do dealing cryptocurrencies. Number six is Advanced Cash. Advanced Cash is like PayPal um, and Perfect Money and Skrill. Uh, but this one, you also need to have it if you are going to be dealing cryptocurrencies. Number seven is uh, Web Money. Web Money is similar to PayPal, Perfect Money, Advanced Cash and Skrill. It allows you to receive uh, funds and send funds across the world relatively cheap, fast, and uh, it is a good platform. It's Russian. So it's lower down because it's Russian and a lot of times you have to use Google Translate to use it. Number eight is NetTeller. NetTeller is practically the same as Skrill. With, um, they are owned by the same parent company. So they have the same pricing, uh, practically the same terms and conditions, but they operate differently. So they have different rules. Skrill is more user friendly than uh, NetTeller. And Netella does have a few restrictions. That's why it's down on my list. So number nine is uh, ePay. ePay is uh, an exchanger where you can move money from one platform to another or uh, are across uh, continents or countries. Number 10 is Changer for You. So Changer for You is an exchanger. It's a really, really great exchanger. You're able to move funds from uh, multiple platforms, from Advanced Cash, Perfect Money, um, Paysera, Payeer. So there's a whole host of platforms you can move money to or from. So this one you definitely need to have if you are going to be doing online work or online business. 
All right, so I'm also going to cover some of the cryptocurrency platforms which you can use with some of those uh, 10 uh, platforms I've mentioned. There's Binance. Binance, you'll be using them in the either the peer-to-peer -peer trading or in the fiat cash deposits. There's also Paxful. Paxful, you'll be able to move funds from one of those platforms into cryptocurrency. I'll give you the pros and cons for using Paxful. There's also CX.io. You'll be able to move uh, to load your CX account using some of the platforms that I am going to mention. Okay, so first we start with Paysera. Paysera is by far my favorite online payments platform that I use. Like I mentioned earlier, it comes with a physical Visa card, which you can use. You can swipe. You can use it online or you can pay at the shops, uh, withdraw at an ATM, any ATM that accepts Visa. Okay, so this is uh, how your Paysera account looks when you log in. Uh, it's basically, look, may, might look a little bit complicated the first time you use it, but it's really, really straightforward. Here you've got uh, a European IBAN, that's International Bank Account Number, which can be used for SIPA transfers. And uh, it's practically free. It's free to receive SIPA transfers. And uh, it's also free to send SIPA transfers, your first five or six for the month. So in case you need to pay a company or individual across Europe, you can send the transfers for free. In case you're paying somebody in somewhere like the UK, last time I sent 500 pounds, it was 700 pounds or 500 pounds, and I was only charged 80 pence to do that. So it uh, the portal, it does get a bit of getting used to, but uh, it allows you to do so much. You can do bank transfers here, and you can also send to web money transfer. In case you need to move funds from Paysera into web money, you can do it. Um, it's relatively cheap to do that. Let me just show you how the app also looks. Okay, so if you're going to use the Paysera app, it's got one of the really best uh, apps that I use. As you can see, I use the account for a lot of transactions. There's a lot of transactions that I that go through, and uh, they are all relatively low cost or no cost at all. Okay, I use it way more than I thought. I have not yet reached, okay, there's the bottom. So it's really, really low cost and uh, simple to use. You can manage your card from there. You can manage your card. Uh, here you can transfer money from your main account to top up your card account. Or you can, uh, you can even view the pricing, freeze the card if you need to, uh, view the PIN code. You can only view the PIN code here. You can't set the PIN code. That's one thing which uh, I just don't like. So it means that uh, you always have to be really careful with your PIN. You're able to do transfers from your app or the, the website. And uh, here I've been able to send transfers uh, to Finland, to the UK in pounds. Um, a word of warning, do not use this to fund crypto accounts. They do not allow you to use Paysera for crypto transactions. So do not use Paysera for crypto they can close your account for that. So I tried to send to Binance once and uh, my account was almost closed. So you have been warned. You can also use send Paysera to other users. It's uh, free and instant. So you can, as long as a person has a Paysera account, whether in Nigeria, Ghana, Russia, US, UK, you can send for free Paysera to Paysera. Now for topping up, uh, you can top up by bank transfer or someone using Paysera can top up to you or you can use Changer for you to top up. I will go into Changer for you and show you how you can top up. Okay, so uh, some one of the other benefits of Paysera is that you can send or receive from Skrill. So in case uh, you've got funds in your Skrill account, you can withdraw direct into your Paysera account. Uh, using the withdraw feature, it will cost you 5.5 euros. If you've got uh, funds in a debit card and you need to send to Paysera, you can send for free using Skrill, using the send feature. Uh, Paysera can also be linked to PayPal. You can use, you can link the Paysera card as your PayPal card, make payments and all. Just bear in mind that Paysera is a euro card, so there will be some exchange markup there. You can also withdraw from PayPal straight into your Paysera card. Um, it works uh, really, really well. It co costs four euros to withdraw from PayPal to Paysera, and it's fast. 
Uh, you cannot send from Paysera to any Payoneer account. Uh, it's not allowed. Uh, and then also, so that's basically the gist of uh, Paysera. It's a virtual bank, allows you to make payments around the world. You can send Swift payments for really, really cheap. Some below 10 euros, it will cost you to send a Swift transfer. Uh, just bear in mind that you might not be able to send a SWIFT transfer to some US bank accounts because Paysera requires the SWIFT address of the receiving bank. And a lot of US banks, especially the, a, a, a lot of uh, some of the US banks do not have SWIFT addresses. So you might not be able to send to America. Certain banks, not all the banks, some. Anybody can uh, do a transfer into my Paysera account. It's not restricted like the way Payoneer is. What I don't like are the cryptocurrency restrictions. Uh, once in a while, you know, you might get carried away and forget that uh, Paysera does not allow crypto. So you might be mistaken to try and use it on a crypto website and then possibly have your Paysera account closed. But it's a really, really good account to have. So my number two favorite uh, platform to use is Skrill. Okay, so this is my Skrill account. It's got a really, really simple use uh, interface. Uh, you can send, receive uh, funds from to or from any Skrill user around the world. Uh, the fee is 1.45%, which is cheaper than, way cheaper than PayPal fee of 5%. And uh, they only deduct from the sender. The receiver receives 100% of the funds you send. Uh, it's used by a lot of uh, forex trading websites. In fact, it's one of the preferred methods for forex trading accounts. Um, depositing into Skrill account. Depositing into Skrill accounts is where they are rather restrictive. At one time, I used to be able to deposit either by bank transfer. They would allow me to send a SWIFT transfer. I could also deposit by cryptocurrency. But those features have been taken away from users in Zambia. So in your country, you might be allowed to or might not be allowed to deposit by bank transfer or cryptocurrency. In my case, I can only deposit by bank uh, card. The withdrawal feature is uh, something which is also really, really good. I'm able to withdraw my Skrill balance to any bank account in my name. Withdrawal feature, you can only withdraw to a bank account in your name. So it can be in any country in the world terms and conditions apply, the country has to be allowed. I've been able to withdraw to my Zambian bank accounts. I've also been able to withdraw to my Pay Paysera virtual bank account. And I've uh, been, a I used to be able to withdraw to my Payoneer accounts, Euro or Pound, but of late uh, Payoneer no longer allows uh, Swift, I mean, uh, Skrill payments into Payoneer accounts. So the send feature is where there's a bit of confusion. Skrill allows you to send using your Skrill account for free to international bank accounts across the world. Let me just click it. Okay, so if, I'm use, if I've got uh, funds in my bank card or Visa card, MasterCard, I can send to uh, Australia, Austria, basically the entire EU, uh, Brazil, Indonesia, Pakistan, the United Kingdom, even the US as well, and Vietnam. So I can send to all these countries. I'm just checking if uh, Bangladesh is here as well, as well as Bangladesh. So I'm able to send, in case I need to make a payment to any of these countries uh, across the EU, uh, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, such kind of countries. Well, let me just confirm India. Uh, uh, okay, there is no India. The correction, there's no India. Nigeria used to be here, but then again, the Central Bank of Nigeria did uh, restrict how you can uh, receive Forex payments in Nigeria. So Nigeria is no longer here. So I can send for free in case I need to pay uh, a supplier or a client in any of these countries into their personal accounts, not company accounts, personal accounts. I can send it for free using Skrill. The funds have to come from my bank card. It cannot come from my Skrill balance. It has to come from a card which is linked to Skrill. So that's a confusion which a lot of people have. So what I do love about Skrill is that it's a really, really low cost platform that I can use. Uh, I also like the fact that, um, although it's not really allowed, but I can do use the Binance peer-to-peer -peer trading to buy crypto using my Skrill. I can also use uh, the Paxful peer-to-peer -peer trading to buy crypto 
uh, with Paxful as well as selling. So I can sell on Paxful. I can. Uh, I like the fact that it's cheap to transfer from Skrill to another user's Skrill account, 1.45%. And uh, the sender bears the sending fee. I like that I can uh, withdraw to any of my bank accounts anywhere in the world. And uh, 5.5 euros to withdraw is uh, one of the lowest costs. I also like the fact that nowadays Skrill has multi-currency support. So if somebody sends me dollars to my Skrill account, although it's a euro account, I will receive them as dollars and it's up to me to decide to exchange them dollars to euro or I can use the same dollars to pay online, or withdraw or transact. I do like that feature. What I don't like about Skrill is the fact that uh, I'm no longer able to deposit by bank transfer and I'm also no longer able to transact cryptocurrency from my Skrill account. Uh, so Skrill doesn't like you using your account for cryptocurrency. So if you're going to be using it for cryptocurrency, buying or selling from other users, be sure not to mention cryptocurrency anywhere in the transaction. Okay, so the Skrill app is actually quite a nice app. It's a really, really simple app to use. It's a really, really simple app to use. You can deposit from it, you can send from it, you can withdraw from it. That's about it. Uh, most of the other for the full functionality will be from the website, but uh, this is also what the website does do. So the app is relatively straightforward to use. I do highly recommend you use it from time to time. Now, my number three platform is PayPal. PayPal is high up because it's uh, it allows you to do global business. Um, there are plat the other platforms I've mentioned are way better than PayPal. Even some of the ones below PayPal in my rankings, they are better than PayPal. But PayPal has global appeal. It's just relatively straightforward to open an account and immediately start transacting. So what I love about PayPal is the ease of use. With PayPal, I've been able to receive rather large sums over the past, uh, uh, since 20, uh, 20, this account was opened in 2020. So I have uh, received over $12,000 from the PayPal account. This is a lot of this is actually client money. So I do receive uh, a lot of funds for on behalf of clients who are unable to withdraw on their own. They've gone through the hassles and some of them just say, okay, withdraw for me. And uh, at a small fee, I do withdraw for them. And if you look at uh, the country breakdown, this is a practically a uh, global platform. So I've received payments from the US. I've received payments from Canada. I've received payments from uh, Morocco, the UK, Denmark, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, even Lesotho, although Lesotho is not showing, but I have received from Lesotho, from India, from China, and from Malaysia. In case you need to receive funds from China, you know, uh, Chinese, is quite difficult to get funds out of China in case you're dealing with any Chinese, but uh, they can pay you using PayPal. Just bear in mind that uh, there will be a 5% uh, fee, so 5% will be deducted from what you receive. Now, one of the major difficulties people have using PayPal is uh, how to withdraw their funds. They can't link local banks to withdraw. Uh, so there are really, really simple hacks to this. If you need to withdraw from PayPal, Try to use one, a UBA prepaid AfriCard. So the, the UBA prepaid AfriCard, uh, it works 50, I can say 50 to 75% of the times. For most people, the UBA prepaid card does work. They're able to withdraw into it. The, very, the really, really funny thing about the UBA prepaid card, I've recommended this to dozens of people and uh, dozens of people are able to withdraw to their card. Funny thing is I cannot withdraw to my UBA prepaid card. So <laughs> it's uh, something rather odd. Now the other card you can withdraw to is the Paysera card. The Paysera card comes in euros. Now the other thing is that uh, PayPal can pay to some other bank cards. Some people are able to withdraw to their FNB cards, some to their Stanby cards, some to their Ecobank cards, some to all manner of cards. But the one, the only one which I can confirm works 100% of the time is the Paysera card. The only card I can recommend which works most of the time, but not all the time, like in my case, is the UBA prepaid card. All other cards you can only try 
link them to your PayPal account, try to withdraw. If you can withdraw, good. If you can't, you can't. So I will say that again, if you really want to be guaranteed withdrawals, use the Paysera card. If you want to try, uh, if you are one of the lucky ones, use the UBA card. UBA is not all over Africa, but if you do have UBA in your country, try to go there and get their prepaid card in dollar. It might work. Most of the times it might work. If it doesn't work, go to the Paysera card. And then also try to link the bank cards in your country. Try Stanbic, Stanchart, Echo Bank. Try any card which is in your name and you'll be able to see whether you'll be able to withdraw in either of those. Okay, so uh, what I love about PayPal is the ease of setup. As soon as you've set up your account, you can immediately start receiving payments. And you can receive payments from all over the world, relatively easy, extremely fast. What I don't like about PayPal is that it's expensive to receive payments. If you are not in uh, Europe or the Americas or any country and you can't open a personal account, uh, the PayPal fee is about 5%. So they'll deduct from uh, the funds that you're receiving. In this case, I received $191. PayPal deducted $8.70. In this case, I received $2,500. PayPal deducted $110.30. So the PayPal uh, receiving fees can add up. So what you need to do or be aware of is just factor in 5% into your cost. So just factor that 5% into your cost and you'll be good to go. Now, in case you need to open a PayPal account for receiving, if you uh, open a PayPal account, uh, try to ask someone, a friend, relative, or colleague to try and send you $1. If they cannot send you that $1, it means that your PayPal account cannot receive. So what you need to do is close your PayPal account, close it, then uh, go back to paypal.com and scroll all the way to the bottom. When you're scrolled all the way to the bottom, you're going to see this flag here. So simply click on the flag and uh, choose to open a PayPal account with a country where they will allow you to open and receive. So the countries you can choose, you can choose Lesotho, you can choose Morocco, or you can choose United Arab Emirates. So now the thing is when you open with these, choose a business account and enter in your real details. Enter in your real name, your real phone number, and your real address. Uh, they will allow you to open accounts. You can start receiving from any of these. And you can also link your local bank cards. It doesn't matter if the bank card is a Zambian, Nigerian, Ghanaian, or any country card. You are able to link it to that PayPal account. Do not try to lie and try to avoid using VPNs. VPNs just make you look shady. Your PayPal will always be putting your funds on hold if you are using VPNs and your, your address is always changing. Then the other thing with VPNs is that each and every time PayPal will try to get you to verify that you are who you say you are and all. all right. So the other thing with PayPal is that uh, once you've opened the account and every once in a while, especially when it's a new account, whatever funds you receive will be put on hold. What that simply means is that PayPal is trying to confirm that you're not a scammer or trying to scam people. So they'll put the funds on hold for up to 21 days. And then uh, how you can get those funds out faster is if you're in communication with the sender, you're able to confirm uh, your the transaction as complete on your end. And then the sender has to confirm receipt of the goods or service even if it's just a friend keeps sending you money a relative sending you money you just have to do that because paypal assumes once you have a business account that every money you are receiving is a business account unless the sender is sending us friends and family in which point they are informing paypal that it's not a commercial transaction so the funds will not be put on hold my number four favorite app is the Payoneer app. So Payoneer is a virtual bank account. It's a US virtual bank account. Okay, so Payoneer allows you to receive from uh, certain companies and uh, payment platforms as if you are in that country. So you can receive US dollar payments from US companies and platforms, Euro payments from Euro companies and platforms, pound payments from Euro, British Pay, uh, companies and platforms, Canadian dollar from Canadian companies and platforms, Australian dollar from the same, 
Japanese uh, yen from Japanese companies and platforms, even Chinese yuan. I've linked this to my Amazon account and uh, any payments I make from my Amazon uh, marketplace, Kindle Direct Publishing, does come to my Payoneer account. Then there's also one added feature on a requested payment. So if you reach a certain threshold in Payoneer, which is set at five thousand dollars, so if you if you if you've got a Payoneer account and uh, so if you've got a Payoneer account and over the years of using the Payoneer platform, you receive five thousand dollars and above, you are able to request a payment from a company or or even individual. Then one other feature of uh, Payoneer is that you can pay other Payoneer users. So the other benefit of Payoneer is that you can pay other Payoneer users. It's free. The only issue is that it is not instant. It will take probably between five to 30 minutes to be done. Uh, there's some work Payoneer does in the background. It's 24 seven, but uh, it's not instant. They have to approve that. Uh, it will cost you nothing and the receiver will receive in full. So you can always pay to or from a Payoneer user's account. You can send to a recipient's uh, bank account. Uh, the only issue is that it has to be a commercial transaction. So you cannot, like let's say you've got a sister in the US and you want to send her money, you can't send using Payoneer. Unless your sister is supplying you some items. But then again, it will, that will look rather shady because your name and her name are similar and uh, you just probably get your Payoneer account blocked. You can make batch payment to multiple recipient bank accounts. Uh, you can also pay an Amazon advertising invoice. So in case you want to do Amazon advertising and you can't, uh, do get in touch. A brother is always ready and willing to help. So the goodness nowadays, Payoneer does allow you to send to other Payoneer users small amounts. Before it used to be restricted to $50 minimum, but now you can send way less. You can even send a dollar to another Payoneer user. It, uh, the only catch is that both you and the recipient's Payoneer accounts must be verified. So make sure that you have verified your ID, you've linked a bank account, and you've done all the verification processes, which are really, really straightforward. The only issue is that uh, the ID they usually accept is a passport and in some cases a driver's license. Most people do not have passports. So now coming to the Payoneer app, Payoneer app is really, really easy to use. It's really straightforward and easy to use straight up you are able to view all your balances you are able to view your transactions uh, then here you can view the transactions from here it will go into more detail uh, incoming upcoming transactions uh, these are a card payment i made online so you can scroll and see all the transactions that you do as you can see i do use Payoneer quite a bit. All right, then under actions, you are able to manage your currencies, move from one Payoneer currency to another. You can pay to a recipient's Payoneer account. You can pay to a Payoneer user's uh, account. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's free, but it does have a five to 30 minute delay. Uh, you can request a payment. So here, request a payment is going to show the same uh, requirement as on the uh, desktop. I need to reach that 5,000 limit. On, on the withdraw part, I can withdraw to my Zambian bank account, but I've never used this because I know that there are a lot of fees, uh, the transit fees, and uh, even I've never used this because I know that there would be some fees uh, deducted probably by my bank FNB when I receive. So I don't use this. I simply transact using the Payoneer card. I've always used the Payoneer card. I've never withdrawn to my local bank. I just use the Payoneer card. So what I like about Payoneer is that it allows me to receive payments from around the world uh, at relatively low cost. Uh, I like that I can send payments to other Payoneer users for free. I like that I can withdraw, I have the option to withdraw to my local bank account in Zambia. Um, I like that I can use my Payoneer card on Skrill. I can use it on online uh, platforms. Um, what I don't like about Payoneer is the restrictions on receiving. You can only receive in a certain manner. Uh, you can only receive from clients who are within the country into using the local uh, transfer system and they have to be companies. In case you do a lot of business with individuals, you can only start requesting payments once you've reached that 5,000 minimum threshold. It's very, very difficult to reach 5,000 threshold because 
that's a lot of business that you have to have done. I also don't like that they no longer allow me to receive from Skrill. Uh, so I have to use a number of workarounds to move money from Skrill into Pioneer. It is still possible if you need to move from Skrill to your Pioneer account, uh, do get in touch. I'll leave the contacts down below. If you need to move money from your PayPal to your Pioneer, also do get in touch. Contacts below. Uh, you cannot withdraw from PayPal to Pioneer. That's something I also don't like. Uh, but otherwise, uh, Pioneer is a good platform that does allow you to do a lot of online work and business and make money. Then uh, the last thing I almost forgot, Pioneer does not allow you to use the account for cryptocurrency transactions. Uh, you can use peer-to-peer uh, -peer trading on the Paxful platform. But then again, remember not to mention that it's a crypto transaction when you're doing so. This is how the Perfect Money platform looks and looks uh, this one they do allow you to use it for transacting cryptocurrencies and all the only issue is that uh, you know getting money in and getting money out is not so straightforward for us who are in africa if you are depositing cash depositing money into perfect money is relatively simple you can use a bank wire although the minimum amount is 300 dollars the same equivalent in euro or gold you can deposit by cash at a perfect money agent if they are in your country. In Zambia, there are no perfect money agents. You can use an e-voucher, which is another perfect money user sending to you. You can use certified partners. You can deposit by Bitcoin or credit exchanges. So the fact that you can deposit by Bitcoin means that if you have cryptocurrency, you can deposit direct into your perfect money account. The other thing about perfect money is on the withdrawal you have to withdraw either by bank wire uh, use an agent e-voucher e-currency or use an exchanger so the exchanges uh, there are quite a number of places you can find perfect money exchanges and you can also use uh, changer for you this is the my preferred exchanger that i use and you can also withdraw direct to bitcoin in case you do crypto quite a bit if you have a binance account you are able to use the peer-to-peer -peer trading to buy or sell cryptocurrency using perfect money it's relatively straightforward and uh, rather cheap you can also use your paxful account to purchase or sell cryptocurrency with perfect money i prefer to use Pack, uh, binance to do that uh, perfect money fee is 1.99 percent if you are if you haven't verified your details with a bank statement uh it's 0 0.5 percent if you're verified with a bank statement so you get added benefits verifying your bank statement or physical address uh, proof of residence now the perfect money app it's not exactly the most perfect app otherwise once you're in it's a really really simple basic uh, app it allows you to do your exchanging from one currency to the other. Uh, you can do payments. You can even add a payee to the list. I recommend you add a payee to the list because copying and pasting is rather cumbersome. You can watch your account and view your transactions. As you can see, I do do quite a number of transactions on perfect money. You can deposit using uh, either of these options. You can manage your withdrawals there and the support. That's about it. So what I like about uh, perfect money, it's uh, although it does look complex to use, it's really, really straightforward and easy to use uh, perfect money on uh, crypto exchanges. You can use uh, exchanger websites. You can transact quite a lot with perfect money, including a number of uh, uh, forex trading sites. It's relatively easy and straightforward to send to other perfect money users. The fees being 1.99% are way lower than the PayPal fees. And uh, if you verify your physical address or your proof of residence, the fee does drop to 0.5%, which I am aiming to do. What I don't like about perfect money is that the setup does take a bit of getting used to. You always have to receive an email with a code to verify when logging in. Uh, verifying your physical address to get that 0.5% uh, discount or fee it's difficult because uh, I've taken a number of pictures using my my phone and each time I'm told that I need a clearer image to upload. So that is something that you need to be aware of. It's not so straightforward or easy to do. 
and the fact that it's easy to use uh, exchanger websites including changer for you i'm able to move from perfect money to paysera or from paysera to perfect money perfect money to advanced cash and a whole host of other uh, online payment platforms so perfect money is something that you definitely need to use if you're going to be doing online business especially cryptocurrency So number six on my list is uh, advanced cash. One of the things you need to know about advanced cash is that if you've got a Binance account, you can actually purchase cryptocurrency at 0% fee from Binance itself using per, uh, advanced cash. So uh, advanced cash does have a few benefits that uh, you probably need to be aware of. Then also if you've got an... Uh, an ePay account, you can uh, load or withdraw from ePay to Advanced Cash. Uh, ePay, you can use ePay to purchase uh, cryptocurrency from uh, CXIO. So that's something you should be aware of. All right, so let me log into Advanced Cash. Okay, so this is uh, how Advanced Cash looks. It's really, really simple interface and straightforward. Uh, you can deposit funds. You have got a number of deposit uh, options. The only issue is that the fees can be on the high side. Uh, I have deposited using Ripple cryptocurrencies. Uh, you can deposit via Visa or MasterCard, uh, SIPA, bank transfers. That is 0% uh, to deposit, but there's a $1.19 fee. Uh, bear in mind that I don't think you can use Paysera to send a payment into advanced cash then you can also deposit using a multitude of cryptocurrencies then for currency exchange you can move from uh, one advanced cash currency to another uh, the rates are rather decent then on the send fund features you are able to send uh, to other advanced cash users and uh, there's no commission it's free to send from one advanced cash user to another so what i highly recommend if you've got friends relatives in the diaspora especially europe do ask them to open an advanced cash account so that they can fund using a sipa transfer and then they can send you the advanced cash so that you can use it to purchase uh, cryptocurrency and uh, do your transactions you can also send funds to an advanced cash card although here in zambia africa you're not able to get the card uh, you can transfer to a visa or mastercard this is in case you want to withdraw to your to your card uh, international ones are not allowing at the moment but in case you are in kazakhstan russia ukraine or turkey you can withdraw to those cards you can use it to buy crypto which is relatively straightforward and easy you can buy tether you can even buy Tether at uh, 1.0051, which is basically you're buying it at uh, $1 and uh, 51 over 10,000 cents, you know, which is really, really negligible amount. So this is one of the cheapest places you can use to buy uh, Tether. Then if you're selling cryptocurrency, this is a place where you can be able to come and uh, try to sell some cryptocurrency. There are no fees for selling cryptocurrency and uh, you get your cash relatively fast. Though there are some fees for selling a USD coin, it'll be a $1, $1 fee, but uh, the others, they are relatively affordable for you to transact. So there's not really that much that I can complain about advanced cash. Uh, the only th complaint is that uh, some of the best benefits of having an advanced cash account, like uh, the advanced cash card, I can't get that in Zambia. Let, let's just try here to see create a card. You can't create a card or get a card from outside Europe or 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 the likes. So you know that's one of the things I don't like. Uh, so you know for this card is saying not available in your country. Will be available soon. Follow our news to stay updated. Not available in your country. So the, the, it will be available soon. Follow our our news to stay updated you know you can get an, a, a crypto card um, so most of these are not available africa so this is one of the best features which sadly we cannot use so that's one of the things which uh, i just don't like that uh, you can't use the card features outside of europe uh, everything else about advanced cash really is good and uh, it's particularly easy 
to use uh, on crypto exchanges. Uh, just the other downside is loading funds from Zambia or Africa into advanced cash is a little bit pricey, you know, it's going to be pricey. Your best bet to load cash in advanced cash would be ePay or Changer for you. Although that will come with additional cost. I haven't found an app for advanced cash, so I can't share that. Now there's also uh, Web Money. Web Money is a Russian platform, so it's relatively, uh, it's a straightforward platform, except the Russians love complicated things. So one of the issues with Web Money is that uh, they love it in Russian. So you usually have to just uh, translate. It's relatively straightforward and easy once you get used to the interface and all. I won't go too much into detail here. Uh, I'll do that in another separate video. But uh, one thing about it, it's cheaper than uh, PayPal. It's one of the cheapest platforms out there. Works for a number of uh, forex trading websites as well as a few exchanger websites. So in case you deal with a lot of people in uh, the Russia or Russian sphere of influence as well as Japan and Europe, web money is a good platform you can use. Now we come to NetTeller. NetTeller is uh, the last on my list. Okay, so uh, NetTeller is extremely similar to Skrill. It's extremely similar in terms of pricing, where you can use NetTeller is where you can use Skrill, uh, but the similarities end in uh, ease of use for people in Africa, especially if you need to withdraw or access the funds. Skrill is way, way easier to use if you need to withdraw and access funds from Africa. Again, I'll say Africa is not a country, but we are similar in many, many ways. Okay, so this is uh, my NetTeller account. Uh, I still use it quite a bit. Putting money in is uh, relatively straightforward, extremely similar to Skrill. You can only deposit by bank card now. So yeah, as you can see, it's extremely similar to the way it looked in Skrill. Getting money out is where the issue is. It's not so straightforward. Uh, if I try to get my, if I try to withdraw to Zambia, it will refuse. Zambia will not be uh, a country allowed. I can only withdraw to my Paysera account. I've never done that yet. Uh, the fact I can't withdraw to Zambia is a negative. I can also move to Skrill account. It's going to be 2.5%. I can pay a website for free, or I can transfer to another NetTeller user. The fee is going to be 1.45%, which is exactly similar to the fee from Skrill. I can exchange one currency to another. So basically, this one is here because uh, it is one of the payment platforms you can use for peer-to-peer -peer trading on uh, Binance as well as Paxful as well as Paxful. So NetTeller is so NetTeller is a platform. It's also very relatively easy to move funds from uh, NetTeller to users across Africa. I can send to Nigerian users or any other world user instantly at only 1.45%, which is uh, way cheaper than even PayPal. So what I like about it is that uh, it's relatively easy to use. It's a lower cost to use. Uh, topping up using my Zambian bank cards is easy. What I don't like is getting money out because at the end of the day, using any of these platforms, what you want is to have access to your funds, but there are workarounds I can send to Skrill. I can exchange for cryptocurrency. Uh, they don't allow cryptocurrency transacting. So please do not mention cryptocurrency when sending to other users. Okay, so the NetTeller app is uh, on the more basic side. It's actually a decent app, but it's on the basic side. It's extremely similar to the Screw app. So what you can do on Screw, you can do on the NetTeller, except send or withdraw to uh, your local bank accounts. Okay, so number nine on my list is ePay. ePay is... Uh, an exchanger website. Okay, so the ePay app is available. It's uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, you are able to do a number of transactions. You can deposit. Okay, so you're able to do a number of things. You can uh, deposit uh, using a bank transfer, which is free. Uh, wire transfer, as well as uh, e-wallet. So the e-wallet you can use you can use uh, advanced cash, perfect money, or faster pay. So in case you've got an advanced cash or perfect money, you're able to top up. On the withdrawals, 
on the withdrawals to bank account you are restricted to U ukraine on uh, wire transfers you can withdraw here let's say a thousand dollars would be a thirty dollar fee which is standard you can also withdraw to your e currency or your e wallet accounts a thousand dollar withdrawal to advanced cash would be a ten dollar fee which is really really low cost a withdrawal to your perfect money would also be a ten dollar fee so it's relatively inexpensive to withdraw from uh, ePay to where you are. You can also exchange from one currency to another, and you can remit to other users. You can purchase crypto and do quite a bit of transactions. So, if you want me to review it properly, uh, just leave me a comment and I shall. Uh, try to do that. Okay, so using the website is practically the same as using the app. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to, but it's uh, relatively straightforward. So the main reason for having an ePay account is if you're going to be dealing cryptocurrencies and you want an easy way, an easy or low cost way to be depositing or withdrawing from CXIO. I'll come back to that in a short bit. I won't really talk about the pros and cons of ePay. I'll let you decide on your own. Now, uh, Changer for You is number 10 on my list. Uh, but in reality, it's actually one of my favorite websites uh, that I use. Uh, I'm able to, be, a lot of times, you know, when you're doing online work and the likes, you get paid in one platform or another, but you need to have the money in the platform where you're able to withdraw easily. So let's say I get paid in advanced cash. Advanced cash, you okay, yes, wait. Let's say I get paid in advanced cash USD and I need to move the money to my Pesera USD. But uh, all in all, the basic uh, premise of this is that you are able to move from one payment platform, Payer, BPay, Monzo's, you know, even platforms I've never even heard of. <clears throat> You're able to move them from one to the other for you know, perfect money, advanced cash, Pesera, Payer. They're able to move them across. And also, in case you've got a TransferWise account and you need to move funds from one of these platforms to the other, you can be able to use this one to do the necessary. So let's say it's from Perfect Money to TransferWise. Okay, so what they're saying is that uh, it depends on uh, their anti money laundering team uh, accessing it. So please make sure that you're not in any blacklist or anything. But you see that here the fees are a little bit high. Oh, they're actually quite low. They're going to receive uh, in euros and uh, you're going to receive about 75.96 euros. The fee will be about 2.43 euros. So it's relatively straightforward and uh, affordable to do that. So Changer for You is the platform that I use to exchange from one platform to another if I cannot withdraw from that platform direct into Zambia banking system or cash. Now, uh, let me just touch on cryptocurrency a little bit. The first one I'll touch on is CXIO. In case you deal uh, cryptocurrency, you know that uh, depositing funds into CXIO uh, costs you quite a bit, usually about 3% if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so these are the deposit options from CXIO. Uh, depositing by Visa, MasterCard is uh, workable if you're in Zambia and most of Africa, uh, but if you're in Nigeria, of course, you know, your restrictions do apply. A domestic bank transfer is only if you're in the US. It will be a local bank transfer. It's free. Don't try to use this if you're not in the US, don't have a US bank account, or are using a virtual bank account like Payoneer. Payoneer does not allow payments to or from uh, cryptocurrency platforms. Screw, which I covered earlier, is a platform you can use to deposit into CXIO. Uh, there's going to be a 3.99% fee, which is on the rather high side. I mean, if you're dealing cryptocurrencies, most of the times the profit margins are really, really thin. So uh, only use Skrill if you really, really have to. So advanced cash, if you're depositing advanced cash into CXIO, there's 0% commission. So that means that this is one of the cheapest ways you can move funds into your cx account so that's why you do need to have an advanced cash account if you want to be able to save 
ePay is another option which you can use to deposit into CXIO and it's also free. So it's going to save you a whole lot of time, effort, energy to fund your CX account. So it's relatively straightforward and all. Then when you come to withdrawals, when you come to withdrawals, you can see that uh, you can withdraw into your Visa or MasterCard. The fee is going to be relatively high, 3% plus a $1.2. So 3% is really high. If you're dealing cryptocurrencies, guys, what you're really, really aiming for is to keep all your costs to a bare minimum. Avoid costs at all costs. Reduce costs at all costs. Uh, domestic bank transfer, again, this is for U.S. bank accounts. Do not, under any circumstances, try to withdraw from CXIO to Pioneer. Your money will just be sent back and it will take you a couple of days to a couple of months to get your money back. It's just not worth it. Uh, international bank transfers, you can withdraw to international bank transfer. Commission will be 0.3% uh, or $25. I do highly recommend if you are withdrawing to your international bank account to do it as euro. Always withdraw as euro. Although the fee will be 3% uh, and uh, 1.5 euros with a commission of 3.5. 3 so it's a bit expensive all the same. Uh, so try to use it only in worst case scenarios. If you are withdrawing to Skrill, if you're withdrawing to Skrill, the commission is going to be 1%. 1% is rather decent. It's really, really decent. For $1,000, that's going to be a $10 fee. So I do recommend uh, you withdraw from your CXIO to Skrill if you do get a chance. Withdrawing from CXIO to Advanced Cash, you'll see that there is zero commission. All right? If you're withdrawing to ePay, you see that uh, there is a 1% commission. So advanced cash is the cheapest way to get money in or out of CXIO. That is one of the reasons why I do recommend you need to have an advanced cash account. The only thing you need to work on is just finding a cheap way of you topping up your advanced cash account. If you do need a cheap way of topping up your advanced cash account, please do hit me up. Uh, I will do it at a small fee and uh, we can be able to get things moving. Okay, so now we're done with CXIO. Okay, so when you're here on uh, on Binance, Binance is uh, one of my most preferred uh, crypto exchanges. It's really straightforward to use. Uh, if you're depositing, okay, so here's my, uh, CX, my Binance account. On the deposit, okay, so if you're depositing fiat currency, the first determinant is going to be if you're depositing euros, the options are going to differ from if you are depositing uh, US dollar. So here under Euro, uh, you've seen that the... Okay, so if you are going to deposit by bank card, a Visa or MasterCard, the fee is 1.8%. Uh, if you are in Nigeria, you can't use your Visa or MasterCard. If you are in Zambia, it's relatively straightforward and easy. If you are using advanced cash, it's going to be 0% fee. So again, advanced cash has got a serious benefit if you are using it for crypto. Okay, so if you are withdrawing, uh, if you are withdrawing from Binance, uh, Binance uh, SIPA transfer is 0 0.8 euro fee. Again, I will emphasize this: the most ideal and perfect would have been to transfer to Paysera, but Paysera does not allow cryptocurrency. Uh, withdrawing to your bank card, your Visa is instant and all. It's going to be a one percent fee, which is really, really not bad. A withdrawal to advanced cash is going to be 0% fee. So in case you are transacting on Binance and CXIO and you need to move funds from one exchange to the other to take care, uh, advantage of arbitrage, some fees or some prices are better on one than the other, advanced cash is the one that you really, really do need to use. Now, if we go again to, if we go again to peer to peer trading, this is where Binance uh, begins to shine. So Binance has got hundreds of payment platforms you can use. So ideally, you can always check whether there's anybody willing to do peer-to-peer -peer for Skrill, NetTeller, Web Money, uh, Perfect Money, Advanced Cash, or any of those. Although Advanced Cash, you can actually just basically transact with Binance itself because it is allowed uh, method of depositing your fiat currency in. 
And then just bear in mind that when it comes to Skrill and uh, when it comes to Skrill and Nepteller, uh, there are limitations on funds that have been deposited by Mastercard. That's something I forgot to mention. I'll mention it at the end when I when I touch on my closing notes. So here, if you look at uh, uh, the Binance peer-to-peer -peer trading. If you have an account with Credit Bank of Peru, you can buy the cheapest USDT. Um, so here, if you want to check anybody who's got uh, Skrill, who's willing to exchange for Skrill, right? So if you are, if you are purchasing with Skrill uh, or NetTeller, there are users who are able to sell some at a really really good price, uh, one point one one dollar for one uh, USDT. And you find that some others are selling at high price. So this is also because you find that uh, some people don't absolutely do not accept uh, uh, Skrill, Mastercard Skrill or Mastercard Netteller. Others are willing to accept Mastercard Skrill and Netteller. The reason people don't accept Mastercard Skrill or Netteller is because uh, you can only withdraw those to your bank. You can't use them on online payment platforms. You can't send, in some cases, to other users in select countries like Europe and other places like that. So Skrill, Master, Skrill or NetTeller MasterCard is uh, a bit difficult to use, but there are always people who are willing to exchange. Uh, if you try to check here for perfect money, you will find users who are willing to exchange or trade for perfect money. Uh, you see the prices which they have. Um, and uh, these ones, uh, the maximum is usually lower than that which would be for, for Skrill or NetTeller. So in case you've got Skrill or NetTeller and you want to exchange, uh, Binance is a place to go. And even Advanced Cash is also available. Okay, so Advanced Cash ADV, you can always find uh, who is available to buy or sell in uh, Binance. So here they're just very, very few. Their prices are a little bit on the higher side, probably because of all the, you know, the hassles of having to, to exchange uh, for, uh, you know, to, to get it out and all. So if you are able to be able to navigate these things, you can be able to... Now when we come to Paxful, all right, so Paxful is uh, similar to Binance, but Paxful has got way more payment platforms that you can use to exchange cryptocurrency, either buying or selling. It's got way more users, way more platforms. And then because uh, of the way more users and all, it does become a little bit of uh, a platform where you are more likely to be scammed. If you're doing any peer-to-peer -peer trading on Binance uh, or or Paxful, always make sure that you have received the funds before you transact. So all in all, these are the platforms that I use uh, to transact, uh, earn, or profit from online work, online business, online consulting. Uh, having one account is just not practical in this uh, age and era. Having multiple accounts is the way to go. Uh, you just you don't really need to learn too much or reinvent the wheel to use them. Uh, there are many many systems out there that allow you to move from one to the other at lower costs or lower transaction costs. Then again, if you do need to be able to move from one to the other, you can always get in touch. I do help uh, facilitate those at a fee, of course. Uh, depending on which platform you are using, the exchange can be done uh, almost immediately. Or if it's a PayPal one, uh, PayPal is the one with the most scams out there. So those ones, depending on our long-term relationship, they could either be instant or they could take up to three working days just to give enough time to find that uh, PayPal does not uh, recall the funds or try to uh, jam me in any way. So I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up like the video, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, and also go to my website so that we can also continue the chat over there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.